Good morning. That's Rotarians. It's such an honor to be here in the Republic of Korea at the 107th Rotary International Convention. I am inspired by the work Rotarians around the world do to promote peace, increase literacy, and especially to ending polio forever. I also know of and applaud Rotary's commitment to protecting our planet through the work of Rotarians and their clubs across the globe. We are here at the suggestion of the Rotary Club of Birmingham, Alabama, who has a special member you will soon get to know well. Let's hear it for Birmingham. Like Rotary, the National Geographic Society has a long history. We are both more than a century old. And similar to Rotary, we have changed and expanded over time. Through our core belief has never changed. At National Geographic, we believe in the power of science, exploration, education, and storytelling to change the world. Here's how we're sharing that belief in the Republic of Korea. We have enjoyed a relationship with this great country for many years through our magazines, books, educational materials, and the National Geographic Channel. We have also funded many researchers, conservationists, and explorers from the region, but we realized we could do much more given the amazing growth we have seen across Asia in the last 40 years. To support that growth last fall, we launched a new project here in Seoul I am very excited about, the National Geographic Science and Exploration Asia. This is a targeted science fund that gives grants to Asian explorers to work anywhere in the world. And we are grateful to our Korean philanthropic partners for their support. In just a few months, we have already more than doubled our grants made in the region, worth nearly half a million dollars, to 22 world-changing individuals. This new fund builds on the nearly 12,000 grants the Society has made since 1888 in various fields from anthropology and archaeology to astronomy, conservation, paleontology, oceanography, and many more. But National Geographic has always been unique in that we don't just fund science and exploration. We also tell those stories in compelling ways to inspire millions of people around the world to do their part to help the planet and to make a difference because our planet needs us now more than ever. Take this beautiful photo by photographer Paul Nicklin. It shows meltwater gushing from an ice cap off the Norwegian coast. While it is a beautiful image, its beauty illustrates the urgent situation in the rapidly warming Arctic. We are able to bring people into this conversation through our strong social media presence. Here is another beautiful image from Paul Nicklin. Paul has said that he posts cute wildlife photos like this as a way to grab people's attention, but then to educate them on how climate change is hurting various species. This Instagram photo of a newborn harp seal pup received over 600,000 likes on Instagram. And those who also read Paul's caption learned that 70% of these pups are dying due to poor ice conditions. Paul also includes suggestions on how to protect these beautiful and vulnerable animals. You probably know the facts. We will have a planet of 9 billion people by the year 2050. There were 4 billion when I graduated college not so many years ago. Hundreds of millions of those 9 billion will be at risk from rising sea levels from many of the countries represented in this room. Critical habits will continue to decline. Species are going extinct every day. 
And all of this would be incredibly depressing if we didn't understand that there was something each one of us could do about it. And that working together will make the world a healthier place. We tell the story in a way that people can understand and trust. Last November, we brought the story of global warming to the world in the big, bold, and beautifully visual way that only National Geographic can. We created an issue fully devoted to climate change and what we can do as a people to respond to it. It was published around the world in 37 languages. Even giving the urgency the topic provokes, we made sure to include the wonder and the hope who has solutions that we can w learn from? What species might actually benefit from a warmer Earth? What can each of us do to contribute to a healthier planet? And your communities will decide, for it is communities like Rotary that will explore and change the world. Together, we can explore because we believe that exploration is not a solitary activity. It is all of us coming together, working to explore and protect our fragile Earth. People like Krithi Karanth, a National Geographic emerging explorer, exemplify this spirit of collaboration. Krithi works at the intersection of human-wildlife interactions in India. We often think of India as a place with more than one billion people, but it is also a country rich in wildlife, with mo most of the world's elephants and 40% of the world's tigers. A century ago, there were 100,000 tigers. Now, there are about 3,000. And as the human population grows, these few tigers are being squeezed into the last 3% of India's protected and undeveloped land. Krithi has recruited hundreds of citizen scientists, people like all of us, to help track tiger movements, report poaching, and monitor illegal trading. Krithi believes that if enough of us get involved, we can work together to protect these great animals. And then there is National Geographic Explorer in Residence, Dr. Enrique Sala. In 2007, Enrique, a marine ecologist, quit his prestigious university professorship because he was, in his, his words, quote, tired of writing the obituary of the ocean that I love. He saw on, that only 1% of the ocean was protected, with the rest at risk of permanent damage from overfishing, from pollution, from climate change and species extinctions. He believed that work and people could work together to protect their oceans if they understood how special they were. So he came to the society and together we created the National Geographic Pristine Seas Project, a program to explore and document the last undamaged places in our ocean to inspire people to work with their local governments to protect these beautiful and ecologically important places. It was a new way of thinking to believe that people can make a difference in supporting the vast ocean. But through this new way of thinking in just 40, four years, rather, the National Geographic's Pristine Seas Program in four years has inspired the protection of more than three million square kilometers of ocean territory. Perhaps the most successful ocean conservation effort in history. But the success doesn't just belong to National Geographic. It belongs to the peoples, communities, and governments of the Galapagos in Ecuador, of Gabon, of Chile, of Pitcairn Islands, and so many other places. National Geographic provided the science and the inspiration, but the change came from people just like you. 
We believe in people like National Geographic fellow Dr. Steve Boys, an African scientist who is working to save a vital habitat that serves as home to thousands of species, many of which are critically endangered. The Okavango Delta of Botswana is a 10,000 square mile patchwork of islands, floodplains, channels, and lagoons fringed by the Kalahari Desert. Fed by rivers from Angola, this region is critical to endangered animals, including elephants, lions, cheetahs, wild dogs, and dozens of bird species. Building on the success of National Geographic Pristine Seas, Steve and his team are now conducting scientific surveys of the entire river system that feeds into the delta. The road is dangerous. The path is covered broadly in landmines left over from Angola's long civil war. And often traveling by foot or small boat is quite dangerous. But if successful, their work could inspire the people of Angola, Botswana, and Namibia to work together to establish the largest protected land area in the world. And of course, people like Dar Dr. Sarah Parkak, a National Geographic Fellow who was also awarded the TED Prize earlier this year. Her work focuses on using technology to discover archaeological sites particularly to work with other groups around the world to thwart looting of historic sites. Sarah, too, is protecting habitats and ancient treasures by employing new technologies that seek out archaeological sites in less invasive ways. I am excited for you to hear from her next. We at National Geographic are so proud of her. And I know you will be fascinated with her work and her message. We believe in people like Gabriel Ngale, a National Geographic grantee, who is working with children to help them become protectors of our environment. Many beautiful parts of Kenya have been damaged by illegal logging and other activities. Gabriel has inspired thousands of Maasai schoolchildren to protect their homes by planting 10,000 new trees. It may seem simple to plant trees to restore ruined lands, but the power of this work, the power of National Geographic's model to inspire people to explore and change the world is that Gabriel has also helped to create a sense of ownership in the next generation of Kenyans. These children feel they own the trees they planted and that they own responsibility to protect their own environment. And kids and education can make all the difference. That is why I believe so profoundly in the opportunity we as a society and all of us here at Kintex have to build on Gabriel's work and the work of so many others to inspire the next generation to explore and protect our planet. One of my favorite programs is called BioBlitz, and it's a way to get kids and adults out into nature, mostly national parks, to look at birds and bugs and plants, to search for and document species. Getting your hands dirty is a great way to appreciate the environment. By exploring their own backyards, kids see the surprising ecological diversity that exists in every part of our world. Every city park, every rural village, every forest and desert and riverside, every place in our shared and fragile world can inspire all of us and all of our planet's children. I'm pleased to say that we are hosting our first BioBlitz in the Republic of Korea in a few weeks, June 25th and 26th in the Punchbowl region of Yanggu County in the Gangwon province. As we educate these children, we are creating the next generation of explorers, of scientists, conservationists, public servants, and Rotarians. 
These children will grow up to make our world a cleaner, safer, and more just place. But we must never forget that all of us here, you and me, and everyone else are explorers too. What ties us together, Rotary and the National Geographic Society, is our belief that we can make our world a better place if we work together in common purpose. Together, all of us can change the world. Thank you again for the profound honor of being allowed to join you today, and I wish all of you safe travels on your own journeys of exploration. Thank you.